Okay, hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. This feels so weird. I haven't sat down and done like a sit down video in so long. Um, is this too close? I feel like I'm too. <laughs> Okay, let me move back a little bit. That's my channel. Hey guys, um, I've just been gone. Actually, I haven't been gone for that long. I have done some videos here and there. Um, I have been gone for a hot minute and that's because I had a baby. Um, I pulled like a little bit of like a Kylie Jenner on everyone. Um, I had a baby 10 days ago now. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd make a video just about like my birthing experience, that kind of thing. I know a lot of the time, I feel like birth stories are very scary. Um, I don't know when I was pregnant I didn't watch any birth stories because I don't know I think a lot of the time they kind of scare you if you know what I mean like I think a lot of people put their birth stories out there and they're kind of like traumatic stories but my one is very positive and if you're pregnant this is the birth story for you because I had the best birth and I'm so grateful and I'm so lucky that I had the birth that I wanted that I planned for um so yeah anyway let's get started so <laughs> where do i even start um i had a baby girl uh and she's just the most gorgeous human that i've ever laid my eyes on i honestly look at her and like i've cried a couple of times because she's just the most beautiful i know everyone says this about their children but like she's the most beautiful baby in my eyes and yeah we're very very lucky with her she's very well behaved um so she was born on the 12th of may at half past 11. she weighed not nine pounds no she did not she weighed seven pounds nine um and then she lost some of her birth weight she went down to like seven pounds three and she's gonna be weighed tomorrow again so we'll see how much she weighs then but yeah well baby girl um so where do i even start so she was due on the 9th of may i will show you her but she's actually asleep at the moment um but she will wake up for a feed like very very soon so i will show you her in a minute but anyway so she was due on the 9th of may um and obviously was born on the 12th so i went a couple of days over um i had an appointment on the 9th um that's where you just go and see them and they ask you like what you kind of like want to do like do you want to have a sweep but do you want to wait for a bit um, and at that point, I was kind of a bit like, ooh. So the thing is, I went into hospital like a couple of times a week before because I was having like reduced movements. But I didn't actually know if I was having reduced movements because I had an anterior placenta. And if anyone's had an anterior placenta, it's just the most awful thing. Um, so it's when your placenta is basically at the front. So a lot of like the baby's movements are cushioned by it. Um, and it would just freak me out all the time. Um, like some days she was super active, I felt loads of movement. Um, other days I'd feel literally no movement and I would just start freaking out. Um, so I think I was nearly 39 weeks pregnant when I went in to get monitored. And they put me on the machine, they like put you, I'll post a, I'll put a video up because I took a video. They just hook you up to a machine, they monitored and everything was absolutely fine. But if you go in at nearly 39 weeks or past 39 weeks, they tried to push an induction on you quite a bit um so because i was only 39 weeks i had to go and see a doctor and get the doctor's opinion and obviously the doctor was like yeah i'd recommend you get an induction but i personally did not want to be induced i've heard a lot of things about induction and i just wasn't like 100 percent confident with having one unless i really really needed one like if it was a medical need but in my mind you know i've been monitored and everything was fine on the monitoring and i wasn't actually sure if the movements were reduced, um, sorry, you can probably hear her. Um, so I was kind of like, I don't want to at this stage, if that's all right, like I think I'll monitor the movements because obviously like some days she was really active, other days she wasn't. So they were like, yeah, that's completely fine. Like it's completely up to you anyway. And then they mentioned that I should probably come in every couple of days just to be monitored. So I was like, yeah, that's fine. Um, oh, she's waking up. But they never really called me or anything to like book that in. So I called them and I went in to be monitored. But I think they took that as me coming in again for reduced movements. But I wasn't. I was just coming in because they recommended that I be monitored every couple of days. Um, so I went in again and then they had to speak to another doctor. And then the doctor phoned me. And if I'm honest, like I didn't really like the way that the doctor was with me. They were kind of just like, yeah, you should be induced. And I was trying to say like, well, is there like a medical like reasoning behind it? And she was like, yeah, it is a medical reason. And I was like, well, is it though? Like if she's been monitored and everything's fine, like, I don't know. It just wasn't really adding up in my brain. Um, and I've also heard a lot of things about induction. So like if they use the hormone 
hormonal drip. I heard a lot of things about the hormone drip that they use in inductions that it can like mess with the baby's heart rate and like put them in distress and stuff so i was trying to ask them that over the phone but she was just basically like well any labor can cause like distress like she wasn't really listening to my points and i don't know i kind of felt very much obliged to have an induction from the conversation i had with her but i went off the phone and i was kind of like i have a think about it and like you know and then um i decided to just um keep monitoring the baby's movements i actually downloaded the app called what is it called kicks count Kicks Count. I think it's called Kicks Count. But it's the most amazing app. If you're pregnant, definitely download that and just start monitoring your baby's movements because I never really did up until like the very end. Um, but it was so reassuring to kind of like see the graph and see how much, you know, she moves and stuff. Um, so definitely get that if you're pregnant. Um, anyway, so I decided not to be induced. That was my own decision. Um, it did kind of play on my mind a bit. I was kind of like, oh, should I be induced? Should I not? Anyway gets to my due date and um i spoke to my midwife about it my midwife is just the most lovely person i think tomorrow is probably the last time i'm gonna see her but she's just the most lovely like amazing person um and i spoke to her about it and she was like no like i think you did the right thing she's basically saying obviously the doctors will push an induction because they want to cover their own backs but you're, you're not like a silly person like if you had any worries you would be induced and i was like yeah exactly so at that point, we kind of made a plan. Um, so I've been having growth scans throughout my pregnancy just because they thought she was really small. Like, I don't know. Obviously the way they measure the baby. So the midwife like uses a tape measure to measure your bump. My bump was very, very small and was up until I gave birth. Um, and then obviously the growth scans were just coming out like completely different. It was really, really weird. My growth chart was literally like all over the gaff. So she basically said to me, right, why don't you go and have a scan tomorrow just to make sure everything is working still, like the placenta um, and the, like the cord and stuff like that. So she put me in for a scan and then she put me in for an appointment the same day. So that was two days later. The scan and the following appointment with her was two days later, so I'd be 40 plus two. Had the scan, everything was absolutely fine, the placenta was still fine, etc. And that made me feel like much better about not having the induction because everything was fine. So, where am I going with this? Yeah, went for the scan and then I had the midwife later on. Went to go see the midwife and obviously I was 40 plus 2 then. And I was having no real signs of going into labour, so she was like, right... We can do a sweep today um, and like we can maybe book you in for an induction like next week. So I decided to go for a sweep and then I also booked an induction for the following like Tuesday just in case I needed it. Anyway, had the sweep and honestly it wasn't that bad. She was like, <laughs> she was saying to me, she was like, if you need me to stop at any moment just tell me because some people find this like awful. And I was like kind of working myself up for it. Um, but it was absolutely fine. I found it absolutely fine. She was like, oh my God, like how the hell are you dealing with this? And she managed to like proper like do a big sweep. I think she did it twice because she was like, do you mind if I do it again? Um, and at that stage I was two centimeters dilated and she was like, your cervix is really like thin, which is good. Um, so I had that done, absolutely fine. After I had like kind of like little cramps, I put a pad on, but there wasn't like a lot of bleeding or anything. I just had like little kind of cramps. Um, but then <laughs> we get to the evening and the cramps start getting a little bit worse and then by about 10 o'clock they were very very bad and that's when i started like actually having contractions which is crazy like i, c I could not believe it had worked that well i think a lot of the time i don't know she just basically said um a lot of the time they don't really work um it's just kind of a way to try and get labor to come on but it worked honey it came on um so yeah from about 10 o'clock when i was 40 plus two days um i was having quite bad well they weren't bad but they were painful um and then in the night um i was like i said to my boyfriend i was like i think it's i think it's happening um so we got all prepared to kind of go to hospital i think i called the hospital i think i firmed it until like i can't remember did i call them in the night I don't think I did. I think I called them in the morning. But 
when I called them, it must have been like five, six a.m. They they don't like you. They don't want you to come in like really early. I do completely understand it. Like it's better to kind of have your early labour at home, like in your own surroundings and stuff. But I was in so much pain by the morning. I hadn't slept at all. Neither had my boyfriend, and I was really struggling. Like I couldn't. I could not sit through the contractions. Like I had to get up, and like when I'd get up, it would, oh, it would just hurt so much. Um, so I called them and they were basically like, oh, like, have you eaten anything? And I was like, not really. And they were like, can you try and eat something and just take paracetamol? And I was like, mm, okay, no worries. So I ate something, but I was still like in so much pain. Like <laughs> I was like basically crying because I was in so much pain. Like paracetamol was not doing anything. So I called them back after I'd eaten and I was like, I'm sorry, but I can't deal. Like I just want some pain relief. I don't really want to like stay in hospital if I'm not ready to but I need some kind of pain relief that's gonna help um and they were like okay come in so I went in had a check but I was only two centimeters dilated still and I was actually really upset because that was me saying to my boyfriend like oh I'm definitely like eight centimeters no I was two centimeters um so they gave me some tablets I don't know what they were I thought they were morphine but they were they weren't morphine there was something like morphine I think it began with a D I'm not too sure but they gave me them and then they were like you can either stay here or you can go home um if you stay here we'll monitor you like every four hours and I was just like I don't really want to stay in a hospital so I was like it's okay like I'll go home but I always had this like feeling at the back of my mind I was like as soon as these wear off I'm just going to be in so much pain again and that's exactly what happened so I got home felt okay like I literally felt good for a couple of hours like I lay down I didn't sleep but I managed to like lay down and like I got myself comfortable but a couple of hours later I was in so much pain again um so I think it was about three o'clock um so to begin with I went in at like 9am I firmed it until like three o'clock and I was like I'm gonna have to call them again so I called them again and they were like yeah like come in so I went in <laughs> it was so bad like I just remember walking like because you have to go up to like the labor delivery suite I just remember like oh my god there was someone in the lift I think it was a worker and I just felt so bad because I was like struggling and she could see that i was struggling and bless her she like took us through to the delivery suite like scanned us in and stuff and then we got to like the check-in desk and i had to like lean over it because i was in so much pain um and then we went into a little room where i was assessed again so they basically do a what's it called vaginal examination just to see how many centimeters dilated i was turns out i was four centimeters which was an improvement so they said i could stay um because i was struggling with these contractions i can't lie so what they did is they filled the birthing pool up for me um and then yeah quite promptly after that i got into the birthing pool got the gas and air the gas and air was incredible i love the gas and air i know it doesn't work for everyone like they were saying to me some people feel really sick on gas and air some people just don't like it so just be careful with it to start with but I absolutely loved it it took the edge off for me and yeah it was bearable for me so I was in the birthing pool for hours I must have been in there for absolutely hours because I think I got in there probably about half four maybe and then I had her at half eleven so I was in there for quite a few hours but it did not feel like that at all and I just want to say the midwives that we had were absolutely incredible I obviously went to the Basingstoke hospital because that's near to me and yeah we had four different midwives because obviously we had two we had like a student and a normal midwife up until about i think they finished their shift at eight and then they swapped over but they were just absolutely incredible people like i can't even fault them one bit um every single person we came into contact with in the hospital were just amazing so yes so the contractions i don't know the contractions were the worst part because it just makes you feel like you're losing your breath and like I don't know my boyfriend was the best um kind of support for me so I actually did hypnobirthing throughout my pregnancy I did it through the birth uprising I'll put it um I'll put a link down below if you guys want to go check it out but that really helped me just like the breathing exercises that kind of thing um really 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 helped also we played music which really helped me as well um uh, my boyfriend bought his bluetooth speaker we were just like can we put some music on they were like yeah of course like this is your own space like use it how you want 
So we put some music on and we also had like a galaxy projector, which was really, really nice. I've actually got one at home. We didn't bring it. And I was just like, I really hope they have one there. And they went to go and find it for me. They put the projector on and it was just, it was amazing. I'll insert some videos. I've got some videos of like the room and stuff. Um, so yeah, the contractions were getting bad, but they were, it was doable. Okay, it was doable with the gas and air. Um, I love the effect of gas and air. Like afterwards, I was just like, I don't even know. But it really takes the edge off it. Um, I know quite a few hospitals have like banned it at the moment, which is really, really, really shit. But mine hadn't, thank God. Um, so yeah, I was getting contractions like, oh, I, I don't even know timings right now. But in the end, I was getting a contraction like every couple of minutes. Like it was really annoying because I was trying to have a conversation with the midwives like, and just like speak to people. But I just could not when these contractions hit, like I was just on the gas and air. Um, and then they would monitor her every so often just for, like with the Doppler, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so then it got to like, must have been like, I don't know how long I was pushing for, I really don't know. I don't think it was that long. Um, and I don't really remember a lot of it if I'm honest. I just remember a lot of pressure down there. Like, you know we need to push. That's all I'm gonna say. Like, I knew that I had to push. I didn't actually poo, which is good. Um, but yeah, I knew that I had to push. I had to push this girl out of me. Um, and I think the pushing was the hardest part because obviously you push and like their head comes out but then it like goes back in. So like, I, I just didn't have like that much energy either because I hadn't like eaten dinner or anything. Um, so yeah, I just had to like go for it. Do you know what I mean? The ring of fire is real, but it's doable like I'm not gonna sit here and be like oh my god like I was in absolute agony because I don't think I was I think I was just so high that I just wasn't um I remember at one point I was literally like I can't do this but that was like literally when her head was coming out um so yeah I'm trying to think got to 11 30 well that's when she was born but um I do remember the feeling of like her head being there and I just remember looking and being like oh my god like I don't know what I was expecting, but I was like, oh my god, like, her head is big, like, coming out of my vagina, like, what the hell? Um, but, yeah, I remember they called someone else in, because I think, because it was a water bath, and it was obviously the midwife and a student midwife, I think they have to have someone else in there as well, which I was absolutely fine with, like, they were really, really nice. Um, but, yeah, so, pushed her out at half eleven. I just remember being in, like, utter shock, like, I was just, like, so... I don't know, I was all over the gaff. I think I was just really high. Um, but I don't think I grabbed her. I don't, I don't know who grabbed her. I don't know if I grabbed her. I think maybe one of the midwives grabbed her because obviously we were in the water. And then they obviously put her up on me and then she started crying. And then I just remember looking at my boyfriend and we were both like, <laughs> I think we were like trying to cry, but we couldn't cry. Like I could not cry, but I was like, oh my God, like she's in front of me. Um, and she was just crying her eyes out and yeah and then my boyfriend cut the cord um i remember that and then oh my god getting out of the birthing pool was the weirdest thing for me basically my legs were like shaking like jelly like i i don't know why i think it must have just been like all the adrenaline and stuff the midwives had to like help me out of the pool because i was shaking and there was obviously like blood and stuff um and then there's just like a cord dangling so they helped me out of the pool got onto the bed our room was massive by the way like it was absolutely huge i wasn't expecting a room like that at all um got into the bed and then they gave me an injection for the placenta to come out that was a really weird experience um it just kind of <laughs> flopped out i can't lie um and then basically for my pregnancy i am a negative blood group and my boyfriend's positive blood group so i had to have an anti-d injection when i was like I can't remember how many weeks, 28 weeks maybe. And they said that I would have to have another one um, at birth. So what they do is they take blood from the placenta or something. I don't know. I saw them looking at the placenta to make sure it's all there. And then they took blood from it. Oh, are you waking up? Yeah, they took blood from it. But it turns out she's the same blood group as me. She's negative as well. So didn't have to have the NTD injection in the end, which was good. Ah, uh, here she is, my little scrunchy baby. <laughs> um, 
she's due a feed so yeah i'm just gonna hold her for like the last couple of minutes um so yeah what happened after that so after that we had obviously they have to do the observations on the baby like check everything everything was absolutely fine they weighed her they said she was a little bit cold they obviously did her temperature and she was a little bit cold so they had to put under like the like lamp thing for a bit uh, and I got us some tea and toast, which was lovely because it was like past midnight at this point. Um, and then we were in there like a couple of hours. I had a shower, I remember that. I went to the toilet. They were like just we in the shower, so that's what I did. But that was a very weird experience. Um, and then after that, we stayed in the room for quite a while. I don't know why. We were just kind of like. I think one of the midwives got called to some like an emergency somewhere so we were kind of just like with the student midwife who was really really lovely like just speaking to her and stuff um and then after a couple of hours we went to the suite that you go to like after you have your baby um i didn't really sleep at all like i just couldn't i couldn't sleep i hadn't slept in days but i just didn't want to sleep um so we were there overnight and then we got discharged the next day at like two o'clock um they were just like you can go um so yeah, that is basically my birth story. I think I've put everything in there. I don't think I've missed out anything. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a really good birth. Like, I can't lie, like, I can't fault anyone. Um, obviously it was painful, but it was definitely doable and I would do it again for this little cutie. Um, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Um, make sure you follow me on TikTok and Instagram and everything because there'll be more content coming. I'm just kind of like enjoying time with my boyfriend and the baby at the moment. Um, but there'll be definitely more content coming. Um, so yeah, love you guys. Bye.